Hey guys, welcome to the stream. I'm DDJ. How are you guys doing this morning? Shit, we've got a few people here already. Yeah, I'm yeah, just, you uh, do. I just ran back to get my cup of coffee, so I'm a little bit out of breath because I was sprinting up some stairs. For those who don't know, I'm DDJ. I am the author of the Amazon Civil Rights bestseller, The Feminist Lie. It was never about equality. I'm also the co-host of the TFM 420 show and the TFM Saturday show. This show, and again, I'm a little nervous because it's my first show. This show is going to focus on a single topic every, every show. And I'll have usually one, maybe two guests. This week, we've got Grizzly MGTOW with us. And uh, Grizzly, why don't you go tell a little about yourself? Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. This, this is Grizzly, Grizzly MGTOW. MGTOW. I hope you all doing well today. today. Um, um, not really, not really much, much to say. say I, uh, I, got I got my, my first, first red pill like, like six, six years, years old, old and it's continuing, continuing on, on since. since and and I've, been I've been pretty, pretty red pilled. And, and, and then two years, years ago, I decided to start a channel and review news articles. Share, share my, my experiences, experiences and, and try to try wake, to wake you guys, guys up. Sounds good. So it sounds like um, there's an echo in Discord. Is everybody hearing the echo? Yeah, yeah they're, they're saying, saying um, Doctor saying, saying uh, 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 there's, there's an um, um, echo. echo. Is the echo still there? I don't think it is. I think that it's uh, so for some reason the desktop audio is coming through twice. Go ahead and talk again. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if it's on my side. No, I think it, it's uh, it's part of the OBS. So just wanted oh. to make sure that the echo wasn't uh, wasn't there. I think that I've got a I've got an issue with my properties. I'm going to actually look at that real quick. Give me just a second. This is a work in progress, people, so yeah, yeah. got to love the dumpster fire. All right, go ahead and talk again, and let's see if I can hear you there and see if you're coming through, Grizzly. Yeah, I'm, are we still echoing? No, I think we're not. I think we're, we're okay now. Um, is, is the echo gone, everybody? Yes, no? All right. I think we're okay. Good. Perfect. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, Grizzly's got a, a YouTube channel. Uh, he runs the uh, Bear Down Studios Discord. He's been doing this for a couple of years. And he makes some fantastic and entertaining content. So, definitely check him out. So, because this is a new show, let me kind of explain how things are going to work. <clears throat> Pardon me. First, we're going to have, uh, you know, one or two guests. Like I said, we're going to focus on a single issue. Um, we're going to end each show with a Q&A session, probably about uh, 10 or 15 minutes um, at the end. And then um, we'll go from there. Now, let me explain how the, um, how the Q&A works. If you look on the lower right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see my icon with a, with a gray box around it. If you click that, It'll say redeem Bukaki choke slams. Now, for watching the show, you get these points where I call them Bukaki choke slams. You turn them in. Once you turn them in, you redeem them. It says ask a question. You can type your question in and it'll get logged. Now, I've been doing the test stream over the week. So, you know, obviously people have been having fun with it. But if you spam questions or you ask the question over and over again, I'm probably going to ban you because it's not my turn to babysit. So I just want to make sure that, that that's out of the way and that there's no confusion there, and then we'll just go from there. So other than that, uh, Grizzly, do you want to say anything else before we get started? No, let's get started. All right. So the first and foremost thing I wanted to discuss is misandry. And it's one of the reasons that I actually created um, not just my YouTube channel. It's the, other, you know, it's the reason that I joined the TFM show, the TFM 420 show, and it's the reason I talk online. It's also the reason I wrote the book, The Feminist Lie. And this show is going to talk about, this particular show anyway, is going to talk about misandry and the way it affects our society. We see it everywhere, but we don't really recognize it for what it is because we've been desensitized to it and we've been normalized to it. So this show is going to focus on that. And with that said, let's talk about our first article today as an example. And our first article is, going, is, is entitled, Male Incompetence is a Subtle Form of Misogyny. And this is from the Metro. And what's interesting about this article is that it is really just, I mean, 
Jesus Christ. Basically, the, the author is accusing incompetent males as being misogynist because they're incompetent. I just, I can't. It's it, it just, it, it's retarded. It is retarded at a level that I have not seen in a long time. And the thing about it is, is that there's a, there's a quote in the article that is hilarious because it says that uh, male, male incompetence is tolerated. Let me see if I can find the, the quote. I'll scroll to it so we can, we can see it together. Here we go. It says, male t- incompetence is right here. Male incompetence is tolerated far more than female ineptitude. Our society has a number of lovable buffoons who fool around and are excused from acting like prats because they're funny. They might be rubbish at most things, but as long as their banter is flowing, we put up with it. These types are almost exclusively men. Now, this is retarded. And, and let me explain why this is retarded. So as we look at it closely, we, we can see that observable reality really just debunks this entire thing. Because the reality is this. This is Susan Malden. She's the security chief of Equifax. I think she recently retired because she's also responsible for the largest hack of any credit agency in the history of the world. And also, she got her position because she was a feminist diversity hire and she was a music major. But yet, everybody tolerated her incompetence. In fact, her incompetence took her to the highest levels of corporate management. There is no reason why she should have ever been in this job in the first place. Not only did she not look good on paper, she had no knowledge, she had no experience, and she had no ability to do this. But yet, she's still one of the most powerful people in one of the most powerful companies in the world because feminism. So, you know, we, we take a look at that. And then after that, we look at Elizabeth Holmes. Now, Elizabeth Holmes wanted to be the next, uh, who, who was the founder of... Um, of uh, Apple, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Yeah, she wanted to be the female Steve Jobs, so she ran around wearing the black turtleneck and trying to have this clean idea. And look, I mean, she has a thousand cock stare. You know, absolute I mean, batshit. Photoshopped? No, that's her. I mean, she's crazy. You can look at the eyes. She's crazy. <laughs> she's batshit crazy. She's absolutely crazy. Crazy's in the eyes. Yeah. But here's the thing: she's a fraud. She developed her company Theranos when she was 19. She's a fraud. She basically ended up getting in trouble because, uh, you know, her whole blood testing licensing, uh, Theranos was a blood testing company. Her whole blood testing licensing uh, got revoked when they found out that her blood, her blood test uh, software was a, was a fraud. And they, and they were like, oh, this, her company's a unicorn. It's a high-tech unicorn, and they're disrupting. You know, all they're doing is it, she's, a, she's a fucking con artist on a corner playing three-card money, trying to take advantage of people. And the thing about it is, is that her fraud cost her company $4.65 million in fines. It not, not to mention that the stock value went right into the shitter. But, you know, here's the thing. She was a CEO, and everybody loved her, and she was absolutely fucking incompetent. Absolutely incompetent. And not only tolerated, but she was lorded and, and, and applauded for her efforts. You know, and then after that, we take a look at Marissa Mayer. Marissa Mayer is a former Google executive and was the CEO of of Yahoo. Now, what's interesting about Yahoo is, and and her story, is that Marissa Mayer not only uh, basically demonstrated that she was a powerful woman and debunked feminism with her ability to rise to CEO at a large company, she actively purged men. So this woman's talking about, oh, yeah, you know, male incompetence is completely targeted. No, this woman was actually purging men from her company. And more importantly, it was so bad that, that Yahoo got sued for civil rights violations because it was basically a male-focused purge. So it, it just, it, again, it blows me away when I see this article, you know, and this woman is talking about how, um, you know, male incompetence is a subtle form of misogyny. She's retarded, and that's being kind. It's absolutely crazy. Now, Grizzly, you had a chance to look at this article. What are, what are your takeaways on this? Well, besides the fact that this article gave me brain cancer, um, most of it focuses on housework. And let's get back to that statement you quoted about how uh, these guys are lovable buffoons. Right. And I've ran into some of these guys, some of these buffoons. But the question I ask, how many 
these buffoons grew up in a house without a dad. Right. And it's just, it's all about housework in this art. And I, it particularly pissed me off because I could do my own laundry. I could cook. I could iron my own clothes. And in fact, when I was in the military, I earned my own uniforms and I wore them in inspections and I passed. So this whole thing about, and while on the other hand, I've ran into many women that can't cook, don't clean, you know, just takes, take their clothes and throw them in the laundry, in the, in the washer and just whatever. And their places are look like crap. So this is like a complete inversion of reality. I, I agree. I agree completely. You know, and it's what's funny about this is it says, which begs the questions, is conscious male incompetence a form of misogyny? And it's like, no, bitch, you're at home. You're you're supposed to take care of the house while the man works. I mean, if you look at a traditional right. patriarchal society, that's how it works. It, it, look, if all she was given up was a pussy, this is called prostitution. Exactly. You know, and, and that's the problem is, is it? And, you know, and, and, you know, the thing about it is, is for her to write an article that basically says that, you know, uh, being incompetent is somehow a form of sexism on its best day is retarded. It is absolutely fucking retarded. And I cannot believe that, you know, a major media outlet would actually publish this. That's the thing that blows me away. And it's just I I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, one thing I noticed about this article is this, she she could she. Literally took this out of the Simpsons and Family Guy where the dad's an idiot. You know, he would die if his wife wasn't around or starved to death or whatever. But this is a stereotypical men are, bo men are boobs and women are, are the, you know, those ones that are suffering in silence that hold everything together. Right. Well, you know, and this also goes back to that argument. If you look at this picture I'm putting on the screen, she's talking about the emotional uh, emotional labor. What What the fuck is emotional labor? And how is how is her emotional investment any different than a man's emotional investment. You know, if, again, if she's at home all day and all she's doing is housework and, and hanging out and, and, you know, being supportive as part of her job, as part of her, what she bring her investment in the relationship, I think that's one thing. But on the other hand, if she's not doing that and all she's doing is bitching about it, I think that's a problem. Well, being the housewife, you get the better end of the deal in reality. Right. And, and again, you know, this is another example of we're just going to go ahead and reframe everything as misogyny and we're going to show all the different ways you can hate men. Feminists haven't had a legitimate grievance about anything since 1963 when the Equal Pay Act was passed. And now they're just making shit up. It's absolutely crazy. So um, do you have anything else to touch on this article before we move on? Well, this, this just uh, typifies that. Feminism, the other various groups on the left, they need victims to keep going. They need victims to keep getting money. So they gotta they gotta they're really digging now. They're really digging for victims now and and they're just going straight into the like warp five into the retard zone. Right. Right. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next article. Um and the next article I think you guys will appreciate because you know it's just as retarded. Um and this article is we need extreme vetting for toxic masculinity by CNN co uh, political commentator Sally Cohn. And if you look at her picture, she looks like just an angry, angry feminist who, I don't know, maybe maybe she just took her Percocets. I'm not sure. Um, More like an angry feminist lesbian. E exactly. Exactly. So, it, you know, and what's interesting is, is that. So as I as I went through this article, I you know, she's talking about accusations of uh, sexual assault, you know, and she's basically saying that um, men who have been accused of sexual assault are toxic. So, you know, again, you know, like here it says the downfall of Harvey Weinstein is shaken loose a torrent of stories of powerful men accused of sexually harassing, abusing and assaulting people in their orbit. Well, no shit. No shit. That happens a lot. But here's the thing is it, you know, what is how she define toxic masculinity? If you scroll down the article and we'll go ahead and do that now. She she basically defines. Let me go ahead and close this shit up here if I can. Oh, that, that killed my killing my shit. Apparently, if you click on the X, it says "fuck you" and it takes you to the other article. Okay, so uh, it says, um, and we're gonna go ahead and kill this too because you don't need to listen to that dog shit. It says writer Amanda Marcotte defines toxic masculinity 
as a specific model of manhood geared towards dominance and control. It's a manhood that views women and LBGT as inferior and sees sex as an act of not affection but domination, and which vaporizes or valorizes, I should say, violence as a way to prove oneself uh, to the world. Now, what's interesting is, is that basically they're saying that, that women are inferior and, you know, this is somehow a bad thing. But the reality is women are inferior. That, that is the reality. And, and you see this in the law enforcement, in military, in athletics. Women have a lower standard that they have to achieve in order to compete at those levels. If a man has to do 40 push-ups, a woman has to do 10. If a man has to run a mile... In seven minutes, a woman has eight and a half, you know, and, and the thing about this is, is that, you know, this is completely retarded. So if women were equal to men, we wouldn't have to lower the standards for them. I mean, I, I think it was the national team for both Australia and the United States both actually scrimmed against high school boys soccer teams and both teams got their asses kicked. Yeah, they got them handed to it pretty bad. And, and, the, and the thing about it was the teams they scrimmed against. They weren't like national uh, juvenile teams. They weren't like the peak of the condition. They were just like random people that they were scrimming with. Um, you know, and the thing, the other thing is, is that women's brains are smaller and men historically have made up the vast majority of geniuses. If you look around you, no matter where you're at and, and the people listening to the stream right now, men have developed and created almost every aspect of society and everything in your house. Not women, men. If women were equal to men, they would have been responsible for more of civilization. But further, women actually, they, they admit that they're inferior to men. That's actually the entire basis of feminist ideologies, because feminists are always asking for special privileges for women because they actually can't achieve them on their own. And then what's even funnier is when she goes down she, in, later in the article, she talks about how porn is an act of sexual violence. Um, and let me see if I can find that quote here. Um, here we go. Um, let's see. In pornography that celebrate, celebrates male sexual violence. You know, it, but here's the thing. What about slut walks? You know, women, women create and organize these feminist organizations, organize these slut walks. These, these cam whores are out there cam whoring themselves. Um, most of these powerful feminists are the ones that are somewhat attractive. They all have, uh, you know, lingerie pictures of themselves. Even if you look at like Megyn Kelly, Megyn Kelly is a perfect example of that. You know, she's like, oh, you know, I was sexually harassed when I was younger. Yet if you go online, you can find publicly available lingerie pics of her randomly. And then here's the best part. Then she goes down and she accuses. Let me see if I can find it. I'm, I'm going to have to scroll around a little bit to see if I can find it. There's a there's a section here where she harasses or talks shit about Roy Moore. Um, she talks about him right here, U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore. I'm going to highlight that there. And then she talks about him down here. Let me see if I can find the actual quote. Um, here we go. Roy Moore allegedly took advantage of girls he offered to look out for. Well, let me tell you the reality of, of that situation. It turns out that the evidence that they have against Roy Moore, um, it was basically a high school yearbook. And they said basically, like she, he wrote some inappropriate thing in a yearbook as evidence of his sexual harassment of this of this young girl. The problem is, is that when people actually started looking at the quote uh, or the yearbook closer and the images of it, the images of his signature were actually taken from when he was a judge, and they were they were lifted off of a court order, and then they were uh, forged onto the yearbook. And the reason they know this is because in addition to his signature, his judicial assistant actually signed that particular order. And every time she signed an order, she put her initials DA after it. So you can see his signature to the right of it. It says DA. And when they forged the signature, they included her DA initials there so to make it look right. And it was like, oh, yeah, it's a complete fraud. They can't even fucking forge a, a document right. No, no. And this, you know, and this goes back to that whole thing that if you're going to lie to me, don't insult me with a stupid lie. Don't insult me with one that I can just immediately debunk by looking at it, which is exactly, exactly what they did. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. What's your take on this article, Grizzly? Well, for one thing, the whole Roy Moore thing is, to sum it up, is like, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Right. And well, this whole article is basic. She's talking about, um, we need a stream vetting of men. 
is she and I I got the thing from a from the uh, Daily Caller and she rather vet let's let's put it out there masculine white males over migrants coming from these radical countries in the middle east in the middle east and she want and almost like she wants to criminalize masculinity I think that's exactly what she wants to do. And I think what's interesting is that she's actually using the Hollywood bitch trials as this as this whole thing where, uh, you know, if you're accused, you're automatically guilty. This is that whole listen and believe bullshit. And these these men are being. Yeah. And what's interesting is these men are being persecuted and they're losing their jobs. They're losing their livelihoods. They're losing their friendships. They're losing association with their family. Yet we live in a rape culture. Yet then they turn around the same breath or, oh, it's rape culture or it's toxic masculinity or we live. No, if we lived in a culture where there was a rape culture, a random ugly guy could walk down the road and go, hey, I think I want to fuck that chick. Walk over, grab her by the back of the hair, bend her over the car, fuck her. And if she resists, beat the hell out of her, then fuck her, then leave. And and she'd tell the cops and they'd be like, yeah, we're going to rape you, too. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, this, it, this is look, retarded. If there, was, if there was a rape culture, let me tell you something. There would be men with baseball bats, shotguns, knives, and vigilante squads hunting these motherfuckers down. Right. Right. Well, and that's what I'm saying. There's is no rape culture in this country. Th- there is none. There absolutely is none. And so, yeah. Um, did you want to touch on this article a little bit more? Or did you have anything else you well, want to talk about it? You know, the, the, whole, the whole thing about this is, is like, let's criminalize masculinity. She complains about men wielding disproportionate power, but the reason why we wield disproportionate power is because we're stronger, faster, smarter. We have better infrastructure, more endurance. We could, you know, we could abstract think, and it's not really, it's not really about equal versus unequal. It's about women serve different functions than men do. Right. You know. So, and this, she, she, she resents white men, and I, you know what, lesbian. I've ran into lesbians like her before. And they've had this look of look in their eyes, like, "Do you want to fight?" Because they'll look at me and like, "They'll give me that look. Do you want to fight?" Because I'm a big burly guy, I shave my head, and they look at me as like they want to fight me. Right. And that's this 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 attitude she has, and her personality strikes me as being like that. You know, she's got a real chip on her shoulder. I, I definitely agree, um, guys. I'm gonna I, I'm looking at the chat right now. I want to make sure is everybody hearing us okay. Make sure our sound. This is my first show, so it's kind of a work in progress. I want to get a little bit of feedback as far as like the sound. I'll kind of wait for everybody to to give me that feedback. Okay. All right, perfect. I just want to make sure. Um, oh, and just so you guys know too, um, basically, um, I'm not monetized yet on Twitch. So if you guys want to send me bits or whatever, that's actually going to probably happen in a week or so. I'm going to probably be doing some game streams just to make sure that everything goes in the time frame I want it. But other than that, I just wanted to touch base on that, just kind of a, a step aside and have a little bit of that meta conversation. Um, it, there's there's more I want to say about this article, uh, Grizzly, um, but I want, to, I want to let you finish. Um, and then when you finish, I'm going to actually bring up my concern on this article with the next article because it's relevant. So so go ahead. Right. Well, you brought up the slot walk, and here's the thing with the slot walk is, these broads want to dress like whores, but then tell you, don't look at me. Don't ogle me. Don't objectify me. So they want, basically, this whole thing is they want their cake and be able to eat it. Right. It doesn't work like that. Right. I, I agree with that completely. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the third article. And this one's a lot of fun, too, because this one's actually written by a man, uh, Damon Young. Congratulations, Damon. Uh, you're, you are DDJ's cuck of the day. Um, and the article is entitled, How, If You're a Man, to Deal with the Fact that You're Probably Trash. Holy shit. Uh, this article by itself is misandrous. Um, it, it is a complete demonstration of a hatred of men. Um, and again, the title alone is misandrous. You know, he it is funny because, like, you know, again, he, he goes in and he tries to jump on, um, you know, the Hollywood bitch trials. And he expresses his concern about how many of these accused sexual harassers were known about for years. And he basically says, look, this was a culture of abuse. You know, and here's the thing. He's probably right, because if there was a culture 
in Hollywood doing that and everybody was hiding it. Well, guess what? That was actually a product of the sex liberation movement that feminists created. This was actually created through their promiscuity culture. And again, I talk about uh, slut walks. I talk about, you know, uh, porn, the, se- the over-sexualization of women, women who over-sexualize themselves, like uh, who is Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan had accused Weinstein of sexual harassment. But there's pictures of her where she's basically wearing a thong and she's got pasties over her nipple and like her, she's got like a see-through chain link uh, outfit. And there, I mean, you can see everything. The only thing that you can't see is obviously her vagina and, and uh, her areolas. It is absolutely ridiculous. But the thing about this is, is that this article, I mean, he, I write and I'm not the best author in the world. This guy's a shitty writer. He rambles. He, he goes across everything. And, 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 you know, again, the short bus makes all the stops. He starts rambling about patriarchy, but he actually doesn't talk about actual patriarchy. He talks about the feminist redefinition of it, which, by the way, has no historical evidentiary support outside of feminist pseudoscience. It has none. And then he goes on and he starts talking about how uh, men are dogs and men are trash. And again, this is just more misandry. And then, you know, he tries to, in his, in his shaming message, then he goes and he tries to use this shaming language to promote feminist scholars to try to further the self-indoctrination. It, it's absolutely garbage. And you can see that it's a piece of propaganda. Uh, Grizzly, what's your take on this? Oh, God, this, just aside from this article being a shit show, and just, I, like I said, if I, if I wrote an article, I, I could have took this article and I could have boiled it down to about three pages. And, right. But just sifting through all this crap, you know, this, this author, he strikes me as someone that eats too much soy and was probably raised by a single mother. And I think his whole underlying premise of sex between a man and woman, even if it's consensual, is rape, according to this idiot. And he talks about the toxic masculinity, but the but the irony is that all all the guys being accused in the um, Hollywood bitch trials, they're all like male feminists. They're kind of you know leftists. They're cucked, but they, yet they're they're practicing the toxic masculinity he's talking about. But regular guys, we abhor this shit. We right. wouldn't do this, right? And it's you know, and he's just, he's, he hates himself. Yeah, and you can see this. I mean, this is this is very easily seen. You know, and again, what's interesting is is that you know, men are not equal to women. Men are are physically superior. Um, you know, there are more men out there that are geniuses and there are more male inventors and there are more male strate- uh basically like um uh strategic masters. You see this, you know, that's why there are more male generals. That's why you see all these in all these areas of scholarship They're all dominated as far as like the developments that are not considered pseudoscience are concerned. They're all developed and and dominated by men. They're not developed by women. You know, and TFM goes into this deeply. (laughs) You know, he he has made massive amounts of videos. So, like, I mean, I don't want to spend too much time belaboring the point because this is something that that a lot of uh, red pill men and MGTOW alike have have talked about a lot. But what's interesting is, is that he wants equality between the sexes. But, you know, even Thomas Sowell admits you know, men aren't even equal to themselves. If you go to the gym, you know, one day you might be able to bench 250 and then the next day you can only bring up 235. You know, so we're not even equal on this, you know, on different days of the week to ourselves, let alone be equal to everybody else around us. That's why we have people that are tall and small and, you know, and everything in between. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, did you have anything else? Go ahead. Yeah, because um, he gets in, he finally gets into like how we can absolve ourselves of this. And that means, you know, listen and believe, believe the woman no matter what, you know, men are guilty until proven guilty, you know, uh, expanding, defi- he talks about expanding definitions. And when I hear that, I'm thinking regret rape, giving consent and revoking it after the fact. And just the typical feminist, like, you know, de- uh, emasculation line. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm trying to find that. So, oh, here we go. Yeah. Um. Uh, you should also know that trash doesn't have to mean ir- irredeemable. Uh, really? Yeah. And, yeah. It's like seriously. <laughs> yeah. And what's funny is, is he actually uses Bill Cosby as one of his examples of toxic of toxically male behavior. Now, let me tell you guys something about Bill Cosby you may not have known. Before Bill Cosby actually got harassed and got falsely charged with all those sexual assaults, 
he was running around telling um, African-Americans and everybody who would listen that men have to start taking responsibility and that men need to basically start being men and, and stop being bitches and stop being irresponsible. Yet, you know, that's what led to a lot of this, because he was reinforcing strong uh, masculinity or strong male attitudes. And these these women couldn't handle it. I mean, Bill Cosby, before these 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 uh, uh, Hollywood bitch trials were found out, was known as America's dad. And he was he was a role model, not only for African-Americans, but for people everywhere. So, you know, it was absolutely crazy. Um, did you did you have anything else you wanted to add on this before we jump to the next article? All right. Well, I'll just leave this the whole thing with with Bill Cosby. It, it was total crap. And and when he got accused of all these for, false charges, especially black women jumped on it because he went hard on the paint on them. Right. And Bill Cosby didn't do nothing. Right. He, yeah, he was he was just doing what most guys of power and influence did in the 70s and 80s was do drugs with these broads and have crazy sex with them. Exactly. And what's interesting is that when they were talking about the whole sex thing, um, he was actually um, he was actually dealing with that. Like he, he the, the drugs he was using were party drugs, like quaaludes right. were party drugs. They weren't date rape drugs. They were party drugs. So and those women took them willingly. Exactly. So, all right, yeah, we're going to go ahead. Community. Exactly. We're going to go again to the fourth article, which is uh, the big picture confronting manhood after Trump. You want to uh, take the lead on this, Grizzly? Oh, God, I breezed through this article and, you know, originally um, the kind of the point where we came from to get this article to the original article. It was she was talking about masculinity and Trump. And basically, this is just a thinly veiled screed against Trump. The fact that he was unapologetic, the fact that he talked shit and he was right. And the fact that he didn't back down from these people when. Um, that video was exposed to him talking about grabbing him by the pussy because it wasn't like he was wrong about it. Right. And she, she just can't stand Trump. She got, she, she's triggered by the fact that Trump won and that a bunch of like masculine males voted for him because finally after years and years, they, they had a candidate that wasn't trying to blow smoke up their ass. Right. Well, and you know, what's interesting is, is that I'm trying to find the section of the article she actually says that basically men have a psychic need to distinguish themselves from women. And <laughs> what the fuck is that? Exactly. I mean, woman, you are retarded. It's biology. It, it, absolutely biology. You know, there's something about men having a dick and, and women having a vagina that distinguishes each other. I mean, it, everything, no every shit. aspect of our biology distinguishes ourselves from each other. It is absolutely insane that this woman would be like, oh, you know. And again, this is that whole men and women are equal. It's feminist pseudoscience, and it is absolutely insane. And I'm trying to find the quote. The, the, the money quote is is hilarious. Um, oh, and then to talk about here, they said, uh, you know, feminist critiques of projects like Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, for example, those that extort uh, women to compete with men in male-dominated workplace suggests that women's embrace of masculinity may be good for ind individual women, but is quite bad for society. In other words. If you're a strong woman and you actually don't need a man and you're successful on your own, you're hurting feminism. You're an enemy of feminism because you debunk what they're saying. Absolutely insane. That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. It, it absolutely does. It's, it's one more of the, you know, in a long line of feminist hypocrisies. I so, mean, what, they want to be weak women so they can exploit their victimhood? Uh, probably. Probably. I, how, you know, I don't see how that works. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, like I said, the short bus is making all the stops here. You know, I mean, all we can do is 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 give them safety glasses and a helmet and stick them in a safety wheelchair and hope for the best. Holy shit. Or or um or curb them or whatever. Do that uh the pit maneuver on to stop them from uh running people <laughs> over or running straight to the fucking wall. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. like you know the license has been suspended for the short bus driver. Exactly. Um I mean, this is just insanity. It it absolutely is. It absolutely is completely insane. Um, I mean, this stretched my brain. <laughs> I think they all did. I mean, all of them were just insane. They were just completely insane. I mean, I got to hand it to you. I don't know where you found these articles, but I got to hand it. But I, you found the craziest, most insane articles that you could possibly find. These are here's the thing. I didn't look that long. These types of misandric oh, articles are everywhere. Fuck. They are Jesus everywhere. Christ. And and again, this is one of the reasons that not only did I start creating a video content. 
but you know, I wanted to have the live show to kind of talk about these things in real time. Um, and just to kind of jump aside again as a reminder for people who may have just joined, if you've just joined uh, the show and you're watching the show live right now, on your lower right hand side of the screen, if you're logged into Twitch, you're going to see a small misandry symbol uh, in a gray box. If you click that, you can redeem your Bukaki choke slams and you can ask questions. All the questions are logged, and I'll take them in order once we're finished out with the articles. We'll have like a Q&A session where we can talk. So even though TFM has Cat to grab his questions and, you know, you do the little bracket question thing, I actually use the, um, the little box with the square. Now, I will say this. If you're watching the show on Roku or you're watching it on Twitch TV or you're watching it on a mobile device, um, you're not going to see that, that little square. So in, in, for those people, you want to put question in brackets and you want to put it in all caps. And then you want to type out your question in the chat once the Q&A session starts. That'll give me um, the option to actually um, ask those questions. And then the other thing I would say is once that Q&A session starts, if the chat can kind of calm down a little bit so I can capture those questions, that would be great. Because I don't want to have to miss questions because the chat has gone wild. Um, you know, obviously respect everybody else that's, uh, that's watching the stream. So, uh, with that said, did you, did you have anything else you wanted to cover on this article here, uh, Grizzly? Let's see. So, so basically she's blaming masculine men for Trump getting elected. And then she, there's somewhere where she read that we got to attack masculine, we got to attack masculine men. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can find it here. Um. Ah, I can't even type today. Yeah, it's in the last uh, page. Oh, the last at uh, the very bottom. Uh, it's the second par. It's the second paragraph. If uh, we're going to survive, both President Trump. Oh, you're talking about the second paragraph from the top. Yeah, on the last page. Okay, give me a second here. Oh, you've got yours printed out, right? Yeah. What, what's the, what's the, what's the paragraph start with? It says, oh, here we go. We're going to survive both President Trump and the kind of people he's emboldened. Go ahead. We need to attack masculinity directly. Exactly. Again, they're trying to get women to and other people to adopt misandry as a way of life. They need to attack men. That's the issue. This is not about equality. It's never been about equality. That's why I wrote the book, The Feminist Lie. It's never about equality because it's not. And this feminist scholar actually admits it. And she even says right here, in fact, we should be suspicious of males who strongly identify as men as we are as we are of white people who strongly identify as white. It, really? It, this chick is insane. She is absolutely insane. And, you know, and again, she's yeah. talking about Trump's America. This, this has, you know, she acts like, so here's the thing that, that blows me away about the whole Trump presidency. This was a democratically elected leader. He was not, like, he didn't just take power. It wasn't like a bunch of, you know, toxically masculine men came in with guns and they said, hey, bitches. Fuck off. We're taking over. No, that's not exactly. Back to the kitchen. Exactly. That's not how it happened at all. And what's funny about it is, is that grab him in the pussy comment. Read the whole comment. Go find the quote. Read the comment. The best part about that comment is, is that it confirms female hypergamy. He says, if you're rich, if you're wealthy, you can do whatever you want to these women. You can grope them. You can do whatever you want. And guess what? Every one of these women who's accused these men in, in the Hollywood bitch trials, every one of these women. Let these men fuck them. Um, God, who is it? I think it was, uh, I forget the woman's name, but there was a woman who actually had been accusing these men of sexual harassment. And then she said she was raped. Then she turned around and she came out and she admitted, oh, I consented because I wanted to avoid rape. No, you consented because you wanted to trade your pussy for popularity, celebrity, Ashley and Judd. money. Ashley Judd. There you go. And I'll tell you something, though. I bet all these women... Like you know, orgasm right on this guy on these guys' dick when they were fucking them. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. And I've the seen powers an aphrodisiac. It, it really is. And and you know, it's interesting because I've actually seen articles where they say basically, uh, men who are rich and ugly, they can pull these hot women because women want men for their resources. They want men for their ability to date rape them. Um, you know, or I should say divorce rape them, not date rape them. Um, you know, so they go from there. So you know that and that again. That completely, it, the whole thing just blows me away. Um, but yeah, so did you have any final thoughts on this article? Oh, God, you know, the final <laughs> thoughts I have is not so much on this article. It's about the fact that that these, you know, I would just laugh my ass off at these bitches 
if they weren't in positions of power, if they weren't in academia and they weren't teaching young kids and they weren't teaching these young men to be guilty for being men. Cause when I was in, when I, I'm on the 50 year plan for my A degree. So I took some classes and I had a crazy feminist, uh, you know, critical thinking teacher. And she was critical of your thinking. If it didn't conform to her leftist uh, ideology. And she, you know, she resent just like this woman, this author, um, Sally Cohn, and even that cuck that wrote that other article, they, you know what, they resent masculine men. They, they hate masculine men. They resent, you know, they have this resentment. I don't know where it comes from, but deep resentment, deep bitterness, and deep hatred for these men who are just doing nothing but being men. Right. You know, and it's funny that you mentioned that because as you were talking, um, I actually found uh, this the, the money quote of this article. This this perfectly encaps, can, encapsulates feminist misandry of men. And this is the quote. If we are going to finish the gender revolution, then we need to call masculinity out as a hazardous ideology and denounce anyone who chooses to identify with it. We need to stop talking about what it means to be a quote unquote real man or an empowered woman and begin instead talking about what it means to be a good person and a good citizen. Our nation's future depends on it. Well, you know, here's the thing. When you look at that, uh, Lisa Wade, Lisa, if you ever watch this stream, let me explain something to you. Masculinity is not an ideology. An ideology is a set of political beliefs. Masculinity is not a political belief. Masculinity is a biological system. It is a, it is a, it comes from biology. It doesn't come from politics. And no disrespect to you, but you are a booger eating moron and a hypocrite. If you were a feminist and you truly wanted equality, you'd be talking about equality and you would be actually having the equality conversation, but you're not. You're a man hater. And as a man hater, you want to attack anybody who identifies as a man. That's a problem. And frankly, misandrists like you should never be given a platform. Now, and when you are given a platform, you should be criticized for your position. Now, I don't agree with censorship or things like that, and that's not where I'm going with this. But I think that the issue here is, is that she's like, you know, we need to denounce anyone who identifies with it. Well, again, this is, this is misandry. This is what misandry looks like. And these women, they are our college instructors. They are our judges. They are our politicians. They are our educators. And they're teaching our children at all ages. This is completely inappropriate, and it and and you know again, it, it goes against what a successful society is made on. And if you don't believe me, and you want to see how like how this plays out, look at Venezuela, look at Sweden. Sweden's fucked. Sweden's talking about bringing in the military because the police have lost control of the country. So, uh, did you have any final thoughts you wanted to leave us on with that? Grizzly? You know what? This whole thing. It- is a little complicated because I bet this woman hates masculine men, but at the same time, she wants a masculine man. Sure. And, and it, just a complete insane burger that's going on in her head. Cause she wants a guy to be manly. She wants to feel safe, but at the same time she resents it. And that's just the crazy female thinking. Right. And then, and, you know, and that is basically masculine or um, misandry today. So we're going to leave uh, the, with the last article on a good note. Um, judge restores Tyrese Gibson's shared custody of his daughter and denies his ex-wife's restraining order bid. And this is from the Daily News, and it's from uh, Friday, November 17th. The thing about this is, is that I wasn't going to talk about this, um, and I was originally going to do a video on this. Um, but here's the thing. This is another example, and this is something that TFM and I have talked about a lot. This is another example of women witch-hunting men using parallel systems of justice. You know, he wasn't criminally charged. He wasn't, he, he wasn't criminally accused. He wasn't arrested. Um, but they tried. They tried to destroy him. And, you know, if you guys had watched recently, you'll see, there's a video of him. I think MGTOW 101 has put it up on his channel. There's been some other people that have put it up on their uh, channels where he's just, he's, he's basically breaking down in tears because he misses his daughter. This is what every man goes through in divorce. You know, they break down, they cry, they miss their children, and, and they go through this sense of, of grieving and loss the same way somebody would grieve and uh, over the loss uh, of life of a loved one, you know, when somebody dies. 
But the problem is, is it, you know, the people are still alive. So this is good news. The, the fact that he able, was able to get the court to, to look at observable reality, I think is good news. And I think that, that really, realistically, what he should do at this point is he should go after her. He should say, look, these are false allegations. The court dismissed it. You're making this shit up. This is a, uh, a malicious abuse of process and an abuse of process. And you should be held accountable for it because you're trying to alienate me from my children. They were trying to get him in trouble because he hired a pilot to skywrite that he loved his daughter over her elementary school, and they lost their fucking minds. They're like, oh, my God, he did what? Because he had resources. He couldn't tell his daughter he loved her, and he wanted her to know. So he hired a pilot to do that. I mean, how many fathers would do that? Even rich fathers. How many fathers would go to that extent to declare their love for their children? I mean, obviously, a lot of us would. But, you know, women don't do that. They, they just don't. And so this is good news. I mean, the fact that they dismissed it, I think this is good. But my guess is, is that because they couldn't successfully control the narrative and, and, and he didn't, I mean, he fell apart, but he still fought. And that's the point. So, you know, you have to fight back. If this is a situation where you get accused of something wrongfully, you have to fight back. You have to defend yourself um, because you can't, you can't get this shit dismissed and you can't stop these witch hunts unless you fight actively against it. Um, Grizzly, I know I kind of give you that article kind of last minute because it was just something that just came up. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, it's it's good news. And just from a MGTOW perspective, I mean, he, he got joint custody, quote unquote one, but how much did it cost him in terms of time, emotional well-being and money? Right. And also, I'd add, this is this whole thing of parallel system of justice. This is Star Chamber justice. You know, this is Star Chamber justice. Guilty until proven guilty. And another thing is, you you talk about we, you got to fight in these circumstances. And I'm reminded of a quote from a, a Star Trek movie where they they attack us, we fall back. They attack us, we fall back some more. And then he basically, the paraphrase at some point is like, at some point we're going to have to draw the line and hold the line. Right. And I that, agree. You know, and you're starting to see it happen in, in, in little bits and pieces. And eventually it's going to snowball and it's going to go into an avalanche. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that completely. Um, so, yeah, so there you go, guys. Um, you know, these are this is the uh, presentation portion of, of basically the subject of misandry, our opinions and takes on it for the first show. Obviously, there were some technical difficulties in the beginning. Apologize for that. I'm actually going to upload this to YouTube once um, the show finishes, but I think now is a good time for the Q&A session. So um, if you have any questions, um, I'm going to check the queue now, and um, let's go ahead and take a look at your questions, and let's see um, basically what people have to ask. All right, so uh, first question is from T. Enfield. It says, uh, Dear DDJ, what books do you recommend for red-pilled men? Um, I recommend The 48 Laws of Power. I think that's important to teach men how to ghost and to teach men how to uh, be invisible in society. Because I, I think that, that it's important. I mean, it used to be that MGTOW were talking about how, uh, you know, in order to be like the level four ghost, you'd have to go and, um, you know, go out into the woods and, and unplug from society completely. I, I don't think that's realistic for most people. So I think that it's important to be able to ghost in society and to learn the social skills necessary to be able to hide in plain sight because, you know, Sun Tzu, Art of War, another book for red pilled men, his first rule of war is deception. And that's what the 48 laws of power it, it talks about. Absolute deception, because you have to be able to deceive these people around you in order to be able to survive and make a living and earn your way. Obviously, it's important uh, to have an anonymity. And so the 48 laws of power actually uh, does that. Um, so let me go ahead and finish that one. All right, so Zong, uh, Zongetsu Ma asks, Dear DDJ, do you have your own Discord? Not yet. I'm actually um, doing this one from the TFM Monkey Business Discord server and um, in, the, in the DDJ's Inferno. So um, when I first started co-hosting with, with uh, TFM, they actually created my own channel. They called me the Turd Flinging Paralegal so that if people had, like, challenges and things that came up in, um, you know, over the course of the show, if people wanted to talk to me about their issues privately, 
um, I could go ahead and do that. So I actually changed the name from uh, Turd Flinging Paralegal or the Paralegal Corner to DDJ's Inferno. Uh, TFM posts those links uh, to his Discord. Uh, it's a 12-hour link before his Saturday show. So people who want to join that Discord, that's kind of how they do it. Uh, TFM does a great job of administrating that. I don't think there's any real need for me to to create my own Discord at this point. So, Because, again, I, I do all my, my recording. I originally thought about doing it from Skype. But I decided against it to go with the Inferno because uh, Discord does some things that Skype does not. So in cases where I have to use Skype, I will. But there you go. All right. So uh, JoeAmp7 asks, uh, DDJ, as a newly awakened red pill, uh, early 20-year-old, how would you navigate the world? I still believe things are good enough uh, to be with women until recently when I saw your video entitled Avoiding Marriage is Not Enough. Uh, and then it's cut off. It says a domestic violence picture. Um I think I have enough information here, Joe, to kind of answer your question. By the way, if your questions are very long and verbose, obviously um, they're going to get cut off. So try to keep your questions concise if you can. So here's the thing. Um, as far as navigating the world is concerned, go do you. Go go out and, and you know, proceed with your financial success. Proceed with your emotional success. Proceed with your intellectual success. You know, I believe in order for, for especially a young man like yourself, you know, um, you need to be physically fit. You need to educate yourself mentally. If you're not in college or you're not in a trade school, even if you are, you should be reading recreationally, whether it's uh, fiction and nonfiction books. You need to participate in your democracy. Maybe, you know, obviously don't become a political activist per se, because the MRA movement is dead. But, you know, I mean, if you want to be an MRA, that's, you know, I'll support you. I'll passively support you. But I, I don't think it's a good use of time for a young man. Um, I think that, you know, if you want to educate yourself, learn about the world, travel if you can, um, you know, and really just focus on you and your own self-improvement. Because the more time that you spend educating yourself when you're a young man, easier it's going to be. And frankly, don't pay attention to women. Honestly, here's the thing. I mean, you're young, you're 20 years old, you're going to have a high sex drive. So you're going to be attracted to women anyway. But once women see that you're not focused on them, they're going to be more attracted to you. So, you know, even if you do have sex with some of these women, there it is. But, you know, it's not just, here's the thing, with the avoiding marriage is not enough. That is absolute truth. But my biggest concern on top of that is there are incurable STDs out there. If you live in California, for example, you can get um, an incurable, you know, you get HIV and nobody criminally charged for it because they've reduced it to a misdemeanor. And there are there's stories. If you look around, there are stories in the United States and Africa and in Europe, of people who have HIV and they're pissed off about it and they're going out and they're fucking everybody they can so they can basically spread the disease because they're angry. So that's criminal behavior. And HIV will kill you. So, you know, focus on you, focus on yourself, keep a safe distance away from some of these women, you know, and, and go from there. Now, I am working on a, uh, a new dojo video called uh, uh, DDJ's Rules for Relationships. And that's going to provide some additional insight as far as how to, uh, you know, successfully interact with women. All right. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of that one. And let's move to the next one. All right. John FLK says, I agree with uh, Jay Peterson in his interview with Camille Pagula that men do not have a way to refute women uh, the way that men can combat each other in discussion. Anything contradicting a woman will be seen as hostile and it's not getting better. Does your book have the recipe for how to discuss logically with women and refute their wrong think without the man being considered hostile when refuting a woman with solid facts or logical deduction? Um, John, I appreciate the question. Um, that answer is no, because the problem is, is that any time that you want to um, disagree with a woman, she's automatically going to become defensive. So you're dealing with a woman who's just angry. And then at that point, she's going to quit listening to you um, to hear what you're saying or to, to absorb your message. And she's going to start listening to you to respond. So at this point, you're no longer having a conversation. You're having a debate or an argument. So the challenge here is going to be uh, how to deal with it. Now, in, in my book, in Chapter 8, I talk about how feminism hurts women through promiscuity culture. So, you know, there is, and I devote that entire chapter to women so they understand that, you know, feminism is, is just as cancerous and just as negative to women as it is to men. And I think that that's important for, for women to understand. So, frankly, what I would do is I would just share the information and let women do what the fuck they want with it. You know, don't don't try to talk women into doing stuff, because if a woman doesn't want to do something, she's just not going to do it. So, you know, 
If you feel like you want to give her the information, give her the information and then say, hey, here you go. I can tell you this right now. Nothing in my book, none of the peer-reviewed studies, none of the research, uh, none of the facts contained in my book have been questioned. None. Not, not in any legitimate way. And if you look at the reviews of my book, there's over 70 reviews. Not one of them challenges any specific thing. There's, of course, you know, the, the one-star reviews that rant from the angry feminist that's pissed off that I wrote the book. But other than that, it's pretty irrelevant. All right, so I'm looking in the chat right now, and I've got uh, Soul Respect. His question is, uh, seems like this movement is about uncapping hypergamy and showing non-select men they exist because uh, exist women allow them to. Your thought. Um, women want to be superior to men. Women want to be, um, they want to, to control what men do. They want to have unfettered um, hypergamy. And so when they, they understand um, that, you know, women need to be in check, which is why, you know, when they say women know each other and they hate each other, um, I think that basically that, that this, is, this is smoke and mirrors, right? So if you looked at like the Wizard of Oz, they're like, oh, this is a wizard and don't look behind the curtain. It's the same thing with feminists. You got all these feminists that are trying to shame men, but the reality is if you look behind the curtain, you see that it's not anywhere near what they say it is. You know, I mean, look, look at this misandry, right? They're talking about toxic masculinity and they're discussing these issues from a toxically masculine point of view. But then you look at Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Irma, or, you know, even you look at Katrina. Who is saving all these people? It's men. There are images of men wading through water, carrying women. There are images of men by the dozens who are preparing to, to restore power to entire communities. There are, you know, all these images, and it's 90% of them are men. It's not women. It's men. You know, and again, you have to look at it from a perspective of observable reality. As far as this whole select, non-select men thing is concerned, it's irrelevant. And frankly, women are pissed off about the Make app. If you guys heard about that Make app that's coming up, the, the women are pissed off about the Make app because what's going on is with the Make app, is that it's basically showing what women really look like. So the woman who puts on her makeup and turns into a nine, she's probably a six and a half or a seven, and she knows it. And that's why women are upset, because they can't fuck all the, 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 the rich supermodel chads if they chads know what they truly look like. So now women are realizing, holy shit, we have to lower our standards. And, you know, the funniest part about that whole makeup thing is the makeup was actually created by a man who was trying to uh, protect women from sex trafficking, because a lot of these sex traffickers were putting so much makeup on these women, they were changing what they looked like. So these, these women who were kidnapped and forced into sex slavery couldn't be identified. So he was actually doing that for feminist reasons. But again, you know, they were like, yeah, what the fuck ever. So there it is there. All may right. I jump, may I Go, ahead. In? Go ahead. This whole thing about hypergamy, the sound control hypergamy, the good news is this is a self-correcting problem because this hypergamy thing is going to keep getting, they're going to, increase their expectations they're going to increase them increase them men are going to just be like f this crap i'm walking away and then women are going to be like where are all the good men at and then they're going to get forced back to the negotiating table and be forced to lower their standards you know because this this thing is going to stop eventually it's, it's we're going to get back to homeostasis in this regard right and, and the one last point i want to make on the previous question about uh jordan peterson the, the, so the Jordan Peterson, Camille Paglia interview is actually really entertaining because, you know, Jordan Peterson had talked about how, you know, MGTOW were, what do you call us, like uh, despicable and swine or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. Cowards or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but basically he wanted to bring people back to the plantation to, to be tradcons. But then he interviews with Camille Paglia and he actually promotes everything that we say. You know, he admits that, that men don't have the tools necessary to address women in this society. Um, as far as, you know, women's hypergamy and, and women who are crazy, you know, and he's right, you know, but, but the thing about it is, is that he's arguing for MGTOW, whether he knows it or not. And, and it's, it's kind of sad that, that that's really what's happening. But, you know, he has to admit observable reality and he does. And so I think it's kind of hilarious because, you know, he, he contradicts himself. Um, I'm going to look in the chat real quick and see if there's any other uh, questions there. I have the questions. If you ask questions using the Bukaki choke slam system. Um, I have those questions recorded, so if I haven't gotten to your question yet, I will definitely do that. I'm just kind of scrolling through to make sure we don't have any. Um, uh, Jordan Peterson isn't going to get a divorce rate because uh, his his wife is making stupid amounts of money because of him. 
So, uh, you know, don't expect don't expect that anytime soon. All right. So Poseidon Wardog says, uh, do you think thoughts will attack me for being a masculine presenting transgendered lesbian? Uh, yeah, I do. I think at some point that's going to happen as well. I, and, and the reason I think that's going to happen is because you, we saw this in second wave feminism where feminists actually turned on the LBGT community. But at that time, it was basically they turned on gay men. They didn't turn on lesbians. They didn't turn on bisexual women. They turned on gay men. And there was a huge schism between the, the second wave feminist movement and gay men. And you're going to see it. And there's even videos. I saw a video uh, a couple weeks ago where gay men were actually demonized for being uh, sexist against women, even though they were, uh, you know, trying to tell women how attractive they were, just like a woman would tell each other. So, you know, if a woman tells her friend she's attractive, oh, you look cute, you look great. Women are like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. But if a man says the same thing, all of a sudden he's sexist. It, again, it's that feminist double standard. Um, and again, it, it has switched over to gay men as well. Um, so then Zongzu Ma says, Dear DDJ, would you host your channel with non-YouTubers? Oh, absolutely. So I have, um, for the first few weeks uh, up until December, I've got um, non-YouTubers, but I've got people that, are, uh, that I've already scheduled for the next few weeks. I think up till the 10th, if everybody follows through. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in coming on the show and having a you know one-on-one -on -one conversation with me or a two-on-one -on -one conversation with me, that's fine. Um, you know, send me an email and uh, you know send me your Skype information in your email. Don't give me your email address because I'm not going to email you. Um, I just don't have time. And again, you know, you're an adult. It's not my turn to babysit. No disrespect to you. That's just the, that's the brutal reality of the situation. So, you know, send me an email. Um, you can go to my YouTube, uh, Misandry Today YouTube, and you can get my email address from there. Send me an email. Give me your Skype information and kind of what you want to discuss on the show. Um, and we'll kind of go from there and, and focus on that. You can also, if you decide you want to support me, you can also contact me via Patreon as well. I check that daily also. Um, all right. So Joamp7 says, um, how does one who wanted a family deal with this realization uh, that having a family while still making sure I don't lose my children. Um, honestly, I, I don't see it. Um, you know, I worked in family law for over a decade. And I, I mean, annually, the annual divorce rate is 46%. And then Static Brain said that after 10 years, only 7% of marriages survive. Now, those numbers have been contested with some other CDC numbers I've seen. But even those other CDC numbers that contest that number even show that over 70% of these marriages fail. So beyond 10 years, it's somewhere between 7 and 23% of these marriages survive. However, uh, TFM actually gave me a study at one point or, or some census data. And even that, that was the census data I used for that higher number. But what was interesting about that is, is that um, that particular uh, data that he gave me showed that after five years, 84% of marriages are already separated. So even if they're not actually divorced yet, these people are separating within five years. So the, the relationship paradigm is dead. And in any country that adopts feminism, where they're using a Duluth model or they're using a DV intervention program based on the Duluth model, you're rolling the dice, um, you know, with, with the custody of your children. And the sad part about it is, is that, you know, you're rolling the dice in a corrupt system where the house always wins. So... Um, and now, if you have questions, I'm going to go ahead. I see there's some things here about uh, um, on the questions on the on the side. So let me let me kind of go through it again. If you have questions and you're on PC or you're on desktop, there's an icon just above my misandry icon in the lower right hand side of your screen with a gray background. If you click it, you can redeem a Bukaki choke slam, and that allows you to ask me questions. And I give them out like candy because you know I think everybody needs a Bukaki choke slam. So <laughs> there you go. Um, now, if you're on a mobile device or you're on a Twitch TV or you're using a Roku or something like that, you can uh, put brackets and, and, and put question in caps and ask me the question that way um, just to kind of go through that. Um, now, let me go ahead and go to the next question. Um, John FLK asks, do you have some verbal judo moves to use in discussion with these feminists to make them twist and stumble upon their own fallible logic? Come on, I need something, man. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, you know, but the thing is, you have to educate yourself. So if you're going to have a conversation with a feminist, you need to know some basics about their ideology and you need to understand some of their basics of, of how they address subjects. Because women are emotional thinkers and feminists are as well. 
Now, there's a difference between feminists and women. So let's talk about that. So one of the first things that in, in talking with a feminist, the first thing feminists will do is they'll say, oh, well, if you oppose feminism, you hate women. Nothing can be more retarded. And you just look at her and you go, you don't even know basic biology. We, we, have, we have two genders in biology. We have men and women. There is no third gender. And if there was a third gender, it would not be called feminism. Feminism is an ideology. It is a political ideology. It is not a gender. So this whole idea that first and foremost, that's how you, that's how you address that right out of the gate. What that does is it lets them know they're retarded and you give them a fact that is irrefutable. You'd be like, look, if you want to talk about gender or, you know, let's talk about gender. But if you want to talk about feminism and my opposition to feminism, then we need to discuss it as it truly is. Feminism is an ideology. It's not a gender. And opposition to an ideology is not the same as hating women. So that's your first example. And again, you can use that same argument style to demonstrate how observ observable reality opposes feminism and, you, and debunks it completely. All right. So Taz the MGTOW asks, um, do you think there's a point where they'll actually punish these teachers raping young boys? It's disheartening. No. No, I don't, Taz. Uh, if there's a rape culture in the United States, uh, like, for instance, the Hollywood rape culture, feminists concealed that for decades. You know, it, it, let's assume that every one of these Hollywood people have been accused of rape. Let's just assume they're guilty for sake of conversation. OK. If they're guilty, it was feminists who protected them. These these people are card carrying leftists. They are card carrying feminists. They are like, oh, you know, we believe in inequality and, you know, rape culture is a bad thing. Well, guess what? They're they're promoting rape culture. They're not going to they're not going to to focus that. And frankly, young boys are considered disposable. If, if feminists and anybody gave a shit about these young boys. You look at Boko Haram, 400 girls were kidnapped and everybody lost their fucking mind. And feminists put out this huge multi-million dollar ad campaign, bring back our girls. Even, uh, you know, uh, Obama's wife was talking about it. But you know what? In that same period, 10,000 young boys had been kidnapped and many of them uh, tortured and murdered. Nobody said shit about them. None. And, and that's just one example of many. So, yeah. So I think that that's a huge issue. Um, and I don't think that you should be looking for any kind of, uh, anything in response as far as that's concerned. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, Poseidon War Dog, uh, can I join a gaming stream? Um, if you're playing the division or wildlands? Yeah, of course. Um, it, you know, and if I'm on a gaming stream and you guys have my steam information or you've got my Uplay information and I'm there, you know, absolutely feel free to join. Um, the, you know, occasionally I'll like, if I go on wildlands, I might teach people like how to do certain things. Um, and those gaming streams, I'm not going to upload those to YouTube. Those are just casual streams for me to hang out with people and stuff like that. Um, and also, um, I'm going to be doing like patron only streams. So like for for my uh, for certain patrons, I'll be doing a monthly stream for them. I won't actually be putting that in public, but um, basically I'll be getting together a group with my patrons. And once a month, they, you know, they can they can pick my brain or have access to me um, and go from there. All right. So uh, Thompson 45 asked a question. Um, are you aware YouTube has uh, terminated Cord Wainer's channel who mirrored uh, Truth Over Everything's videos the same day as John MGTOW's is Freedom? No, I actually wasn't. Um, so I, um, I mirror all my content to BitChute. I think that people need to be looking uh, at their channels from a multiple platform aspect. And, and I'll I was give just going to say that. Yeah. If you're, if you're, so you, even though YouTube is kind of like the primary channel, YouTube is going to be dying. And when it comes to um, content creation, people need to get away from the YouTube model. We have this YouTube mindset and we have, the, you know, we are so we've been so pavloved into the YouTube mindset that, that that's how we focus on it. So when it comes to those kinds of things, um, you know, we need to look at a different mindset. So, for example, when we to conduct an Internet search, we don't call it an Internet search anymore. We say go Google it because it's branding for them. We need to quit that. We need to train ourselves not to do that. So. Um, you know, even though my channel is monetized through Google, they've demonetized almost every one of my videos right out of the gate. So, you know, for financial support, I have to look at Patreon. I have to look at Twitch. I have to look at Minds.com. Um, and again, you know, uh, Twitter now is starting to take action against people who do things on websites other than Twitter. So if you go to a website that Twitter doesn't like, they'll ban you for it because they're going to track your cookies. So oh, hashtag big brother, hashtag big brother. So you, here's what I would do. I would actually have a browser, whether it's Chrome or, or uh, um, Firefox or something like that. Use that for your social media. 
Then use your other browser to go wherever the fuck you want, and they can go play hide and go fuck themselves. So use Brave. So like I use Brave for almost all my browsing now, and most of my internet searches I use Quant. Um, and Quant is almost as good as Google Search. There's a couple things that Google does better than that. But again, if I have to do a Google search, I'll go to like my Firefox browser, and I'll use my Firefox browser to do my Google searches and things like that. But I don't go to any kind of questionable websites on that browser because I don't want those cookies to be transferred to Twitter. So, you know, fuck them if they can't take a joke. This is what opposable thumbs are all about. And men solve problems, and this is one way we can solve problems. Now, Brave is a little bit slower, even though it talks about how much faster it is. Brave is a slightly slower browser, um, but, it, but, it, but it works. It's functional. So, Well, let's take, let's take it to the next level. And, you know, maybe it's time people stop, start getting away from Twitter and Facebook and frequenting sites like Gab.ia and Minds.com. Right. And that's one of the reasons that I, I, I want to bring people to those sites as well, because I think that, you know, if you're on Facebook or you're on, on Gab AI, yeah, your family or on Twitter, your family might be on that or maybe use Twitter for your work. You should also start training yourself to use Minds.com and you need to start looking at Gab AI. You need to look at the alternatives, because if you don't, what ends up happening is, is that, um, you know, when you get banned, you have no recourse. I mean, look, and here's the other thing, too. And, and while we're talking about that. Let me go ahead and, and tangent. Um, TFM the other day, he made a video called um, Don't Trust Anyone. And basically, it was about doxing. And the reason that he made that video is because somebody got doxed, and then they got harassed over it. Well, let me tell you what that looks like once you get doxed. Um, Sargon of Akkad got doxed a long time ago. I think, I, I think he originally was anonymous. But I think that he got doxed when people found out who he was, and then he started making videos publicly. When Twitter went after him, they banned him. Uh, Facebook tried to ban him. Uh, YouTube started harassing him on videos. He was able to fight back successfully for now on YouTube. But you know what they did? Uh, feminists started suing him. They realized that in order to silence him, they had to file a lawsuit against him. So they filed a lawsuit against him. You look at John's um, from, from the sources I've spoken to, his channel was taken down because his ex-wife made a complaint and said he was harassing her. Again, he got doxxed. That's why I don't identify my children or my ex-wives or any of those other things. Cause I don't want to have these people go and turn around and use this as an excuse to take down my channel. That's why, again, as MGTOW, you have to ghost in plain sight. You absolutely have to. So, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. And if you haven't seen that video from TFM, you need to watch it because it is absolutely necessary. And again, you're seeing these people who get docs, they're getting sued. Look, look at Milo, you know, I mean, Milo, you know, he, he's vastly influential in the anti-feminist sphere. But again, he got harassed and, and they almost kicked him out of the country. They got him fired from Breitbart. He was the senior editor. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Feminism is a global multi-billion dollar uh, movement. And they have, they have control over all of our politics. They have control over uh, all our court systems. They have control over all of our academia in everywhere in the Western world. So if you're not, if you're, if you're not um, anonymous, and you haven't taken steps to anonymize yourself, my suggestion is that you do so as quick as possible. Exactly. Now I'm going to move on to the next question here. Um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, if YouTube, just as a final note, if YouTube deletes my channel, I'm just going to upload to, to BitChute. You'll still see me on Twitch and I'll just upload to BitChute and I'll upload to other platforms and I'll let you know what those are. Right now, all my content is mirrored on, on BitChute, but don't don't expect my channel to go away if, if YouTube comes after me, just as an FYI. Um, all right. So Joe Amp says, uh, in your experience as a paralegal, have you seen a case where a father who had surrogate children lose them for any reason? Yes, I have. I actually uh, I've seen cases where surrogate mothers didn't want to turn over the kids to the adoptive parents and she fought for custody and won. This happens. Um, I've also seen situations where, uh, you know, even though, let's say, they have uh, children through a surrogate, uh, the mom divorces the man and the man will lose custody, especially if the surrogate is because he, his sperm won't do anything and it's somebody, some other man's. Um, T. Enfield uh, asks, uh, now that the judicial system is filled with feminists, uh, who should I turn uh, to an illegal case against a woman, false rape accusations or anything? Uh, frankly, what I would do is, is I, again... If you have a false rape accusation, when it's happening, you need to defend yourself by saying it's a false rape accusation. There are laws against perjury. There are laws against filing false police reports. Um, and, and frankly, my opinion is this. 
if you're accused of a crime, that's when your civil rights take into effect. That's when your right to a fair trial and speedy trials affect. And I talked with an attorney about this yesterday, um, MGTOW Esquire, and we were talking and I told him my position is this. Any time that you're in a any kind of tribunal that is not a criminal court, your civil rights, if you're in a, a United States citizen, your civil rights are being violated because you have a right to a fair trial. You have a right to a trial by your juries. You have a right to confront your accuser. You have a right to remain silent. You have all these different rights that are in place, and you don't get any of them in a civil trial. And more importantly, you don't get any of them in a Title IX tribunal. So in those kind of scenarios where you're accused of a crime, what they need to do is they need to sit back, shut the fuck up, and let the police do their job. And once the police do their job, then they can go, okay, well, this is what the police came up with, the crime, and they go from there. And if you don't get arrested and you don't get convicted, guess what? You know, innocent until proven guilty standard, at least in the United States, you're innocent. She should go play hide and go fuck herself. Um, I'm looking back in the chat again, and Taz the MGTOW asks, um, do you have all your videos uh, backed up? Yeah, they're on BitChute, and I've got them on my hard drive. Um, next question is from Golgotha777. He says, how much do you think the technological developments from the Industrial Revolution until now is responsible for the disruption between men and women? I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't think the technology is the issue. I think the issue is the ideology, the, the feminist and gynocentric ideology. Um, next question is from John, son of John. DDJ, why do you think some women will not even protect their own children against a pedophile? Well, that's simple. Women want resources. And when women want resources, they'll sacrifice whatever they have to do to get that. That's why if you see like in, in times of war, uh, you know, the man will go ahead, uh, you know, the, the invader, he'll kill the husband. And then he'll rape the wife and she'll orgasm even within 15 minutes of his death, even if he was killed in front of her. Yep. You know, and, and there's documented cases of this. So, you know, it, it, it does happen. Um, you know, and again, you see these women also who will let like with my ex-wife, she wanted to be with this rapist. And so she overlooked the fact that he was raping my kids. So, you know, again, there's another example of it, but it happens more often than, than you would think it would. Um, you know, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, um, uh, who would you turn your case? Who would you basically turn to if you got falsely accused of rape was a question I missed. Um, honestly, I would look for any attorney who is not a feminist and I would look for, um, you know, any attorney that basically a man, I, I wouldn't look to a woman unless, unless the woman was a, was a cold hearted bitch and she was a conservative. Um, so there you go. And Coulter. And Coulter, actually. Uh, Thompson45 says, uh, what kind of guns do you own, DDJ, uh, for serious use? Um, I, I, I own the ones with the barrel that I point at the person I'm trying to shoot. And that's the best answer you're going to get. Somebody comes to my house, they're going to find out. All right. Um, JDT2869 says, I enjoyed reading your book. In your next book, are you going to further detail the points you discussed in your first book? Um, I'm actually considering at some point doing a second edition of The Feminist Lie, not just as a grammatical pass, but as an actual second edition to kind of go into more detail um, or to address things that I didn't address in this book, because this book was a 101 primer. So it's basically for blue pill men or men who are not complete cucks to uncuck themselves. More importantly, I wrote the book so that it was approachable from anybody even if um, they didn't read books. So anybody who, like, say, uh, a construction worker who never reads, um, I made the book so it's small. Like, if it's a paperback, you could take it and you can put it in your lunchbox or you could put it in your back pocket. You could take it with you to the job site and read it on your lunch or, you know, uh, wherever you go. So I made it so it was small exactly for that reason. So I wanted it to be approachable by everyone. And my next book is actually going to be discussing the issue of divorce rape specifically and the things associated with that. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely considering doing a second edition of the book. Um, Zong Getsu Ma says, uh, are you going to Warframe anytime soon? Yeah, I was considering doing it sometime later this week. Um, and then Igor Bloodscene asks, on Gab AI, I get fake followers. Uh, I don't do anything on here, and yet I have new followers each day. Yeah, I don't care about that. I don't it, it, Look, you know, here's the thing. It, it, go masturbate. And go worry about your followers and, you know, see which see which one gives you something in return. Don't waste your time on shit that doesn't matter. We're all going to have fake followers. I'm sure some of the people on my Twitter are fake followers. Don't worry about that. Ignore that. You know, they're, they're going to be fake followers anywhere. Anytime you see a social media platform that's going to be out there, there's going to be somebody who's going to try to either 
create fake followers or try to propagate fake followers or, or go through there. And I mean, even if you go back to like the, uh, you know, 2010, 2011, when you look at the Arab Spring, um, you know, there were a lot of fake uh, Facebook accounts that were being used to help foment the Arab, string, Arab Spring. Even the, uh, um, the United States military has a propaganda social media division where they have soldiers. And I think like each soldier has like, uh, you know, 50 social media accounts that are sock puppet accounts that they do. And then if you look at the 2016 election, um, the 2016 election, Hillary uh, hired a company called Correct the Record. And Correct the Record just deployed a bunch of sock puppets to try to foment pro-Hillary stuff. So, you know, that's that's kind of where, where that is. And frankly, you know, every social media platform is going to have its strengths and weaknesses. But the reason that you would look at Gab or Minds or anything like that is not because they are inherently better than Twitter or Facebook. It's because they are free speech platforms. So if you value free speech, you want to use Minds and Gab and some of these other platforms in addition to what you're already using rather than using them as a replacement. And who knows? I mean, maybe at some point, um, you know, things will change. But honestly, I don't see it. You know, I, I don't honestly, I don't, I don't see it. Men's rights activism is dead. And again, it's on life support. I said that in my last video and I'll say it again today. Anybody who doesn't see that, anybody who doesn't see the writing on the, law, on the wall, you know, whatever they're smoking, they, they don't have to stop smoking. They just have to let the pipe grow cold occasionally, you know. But I can guarantee you they're smoking something or, or they're full of shit, you know. They're just deluded. And again, it's no disrespect yeah. to them. It's just that's the reality. Go ahead. Grizzly. Yeah, let me add something because so, um, Fed the Cat said Gab is crap anyway. But you got to realize it's a relatively new platform. And they're still working out the bugs. They don't. They haven't been a, nearly a, around as long as Twitter has and Facebook has. Who's had time to iron a lot of these technical issues out? Right. So give them a chance. Well, yeah, and and again, you know, if you don't have to use Gab or anything else, I'm just saying that you need to basically use platforms other than the big three. And you know, if you don't think it's getting worse, it is. The laws are getting worse day by day. Uh, you know, the policies with with social media are getting worse day by day. Again, to, to reiterate earlier. Twitter is got a situation now where if you go to a website that's not Twitter, Twitter can track those cookies. And if they don't like it, they'll ban your account. That's how desperate they are to ban people. They can't afford to ban people who, who aren't violating their policies. So they have to change the policy so that they can widen this witch hunt. You know, and, and here's the thing. Um, I'm actually in the process of researching for a video. Uh, it's actually probably going to be, a, depending on how long it will be, it'll probably be like a two or three part series. Basically, um, it's a video showing how social justice warriors and feminists are actually keeping Hitler's legacy alive and showing the parallels between Nazi Germany and the social justice and feminist movements of today. And, and, the, and the parallels are striking. Um, so let me go ahead and, and hit the other questions here. Um, all right. It says, uh, how would you go about having children in this gynocentric environment without losing them? Uh, I think the best answer is don't. Um, the, the, really, it's don't. I mean, everybody is trying to talk about, oh, well, you know, maybe we could figure out a way to game the system. Well, you know, I hate to tell you something, but guess what? Feminists have been at this for a century. There is a century of, of feminist think tanks and organizations that have been doing this to discriminate against men. And it is an absolute shit show. These women throughout the years have received trillions of corporate and government welfare dollars to learn and perfect their discrimination against you and your family as a man. Their war on marriage, their war on family values has destroyed the social contract between men and women. So the reality is, if you can avoid having children, I do it. If you can't avoid having children, provide them with the information with the understanding that at some point they're going to have to take accountability for their actions. You know, that's that's the best you can do. But the reality, you know, provide them with the information and then let them do their own thing. T. Enfield asks, and I'm going to take three more questions and then um, go from there. So the last question will come from uh, ex-communist. All right. So T. Enfield asks, uh, what philosophy or philosopher do you adhere to and why? Um, I I'm kind of like, you know, I, I like I liked parts of Taoism. I like parts of Stoicism and uh, Stoicism and Zen. Um, but I also kind of intermix that in with kind of like Sun Tzu. Uh, because I think that, that those things are important. And I, and I say I kind of mix those philosophies up because um, I take pieces from them. So, like, you know, I do that old school Bruce Lee uh, mantra where, you know, you take the pieces that work for you and you leave the rest. 
Um, and, and I do that with both Eastern and Western philosophies. And I do that primarily because, um, you know, there is a time for everything in your life and there's a time for conflict. You have to be able to defend yourself. If you think that you can resort to solving all your problems with, you know, high minded diplomacy, you're high. It, it doesn't happen. That's why we have wars. It's human nature. So you have to be able to protect yourself. And if you know how to use a firearm, but you don't know how to protect yourself in hand to hand combat, it, it, again, you're, you're, you're high because if you're within 15 feet of your opponent, you know, that that's a problem. And, and then same token is true. You know, you might be physically strong, but if you don't have the mental acuity to, to be able to debate somebody or to defend your, um, your personal rights in a work situation or a legal situation, again, you're losing out. So you have to be able to, to have, you know, a multitude of philosophies in order to do that. And those are the ones that I follow. Um, and my reasons for it. Uh, John FLK says, uh, do you believe the male presenting transgender lesbian move would be an actual viable, uh, actually viable in Western societies as a fail safe uh, in case a monk such as I would be accused of anything? I live in Sweden, by the way. Oh, no, in Sweden, you're fucked. Sweden, you're fucked. If you're not if you're not a Muslim, you're, you're fucked. I mean, Muslim men are raping women at will. Um, but if you're not an immigrant to Sweden, yeah, you're fucked. Um, move out of Sweden. Move out of Sweden, yeah. And frankly, your your country is going to fail. I, I, I firmly believe Sweden is going to fail, and I think that anybody who has the resources to get the fuck out, I would definitely do so. Um, you might even, you know what, I wouldn't even consider doing at this point. I would actually consider contacting Russia and going to Russia and ask for refugee status and, <laughs> and watch what they do. I'll watch them lose their fucking money. You'd make international news, and it would be amazing. All right, last question is from ex-communist. Uh, my country, India, gave women a right to vote right from its very inception. Does that mean it was doomed to fail from the start? Yes. Uh, I call India Kukistan for a reason. Uh, I call it Kukistan because if if a, if you hit a woman or if a woman hits you and then you say something in return, uh, the cucks around you are going to attack you and kick the fuck out of you if you try to do anything to defend yourself. There are women left and right that are making false allegations against men. There are police officers teaching women how to make false accusations against men so they can get arrested. They have anti-Romeo squads who are going after single men, minding their own business, drinking coffee in local coffee shops, and they're getting the shit kicked out of them, and there's no recourse. Yeah, you're fucked. India's fucked. Um, you know, and, and, and it's not that... Here's the thing. I don't, I, don't believe that, I don't believe that women shouldn't vote per se as much as I believe that rights should be linked to responsibilities. You know, I agree with TFM's position that, uh, you know, if you're a taxpaying citizen, you should be able to vote. If you're not a taxpaying citizen, you should not be able to vote. Uh, if you want to vote for the presidency, um, then you should be serving the military. If you don't serve in the military, you can vote for Congress. If you're a taxpaying military veteran or a taxpaying active service military person, you can vote for Congress and you can vote for president. But if you're not, then you're not. The point is, is that those people who control the country should have skin in the game. They should have an investment in the game. If you're dead wood and you don't vote and, and you just, you know, whatever, then you shouldn't vote at all. Because if you look at the way the welfare state is turned already, uh, look, at, look at the 2016 election. You know, uh, Hillary had all these people voting for her in the inner city, and most of them were part of the welfare state. So, you know, of course they're going to do that. Um. Uh, John, son of John, no, and, and I, I know I said it was going to be the last question, but this will be the last question. Uh, John asks, DDJ, I heard India had a problem with sexual harassment against women. Uh, maybe this is an overreaction. It absolutely is an overreaction. This is, uh, this is uh, feminism pushed into India, and they're basically creating a false crisis, and they're trying to get every woman to accuse men. In fact, there's a lot of men in India that are actually terrified of, of messing with Indian women. I mean, Indian women are actually kidnapping men at gunpoint to, to force them to marry them, and then they're starting dowry cases. So it, the whole thing is a shit show. Um, it, it, frankly, anybody living in India, I, I just wouldn't do it. If you had the ability yeah. to get the fuck out of India, India is one of the few places. And, and I'm not a protagonist of, uh, you know, where should I live in the world if I don't want to deal with feminism? I can tell you right now, if you live in Sweden or you live in India, you should probably get the fuck out. Pretty much any other Western country is better than yeah. either one of those two when it comes to feminism. If you live in India, get a knife. Right, right, something. Seriously. Um, and yeah, the other, and the other thing, you, yeah, and the other thing you need to remember too. I posted this on Twitter the other day. There was a guy who uh, he came home and he caught his wife cheating on him, uh, and and the boyfriend was in the place. He killed both of them, 
and he claimed self-defense and he won. I think it was in Australia. Um, you know, and I'll never condone murder, but I will say this, uh, you know, dead witnesses don't testify. So take that for what you will. Um, so this is the show. It's gone on a little bit longer uh, than I thought it was going to. I was hoping for an hour. It got to about an hour and a half because the Q&A, and, and that's okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of have an idea. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, and again, um, I'm going to eventually upload this to YouTube in its entirety. I'm not going to cut it into segments um, because I don't think it's that long. My goal is to try to keep the show within an hour, if at all possible, um, and then kind of go from there. So, um, yeah, you can follow me again. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Misandry Today. Uh, follow me at Carnivore on Minds. Also, I created a, a, a MGTOW group on Minds.com um, because Facebook is actually shutting down MGTOW groups. Um, and then I created a Misandry Today on Facebook as well. So, yeah, so it's, you know, I, I've, got, I've got my feelers out everywhere. And, of course, um, you can chat with me uh, on the TFM show on Saturdays and on the 420 show. So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. You guys take care. All right. Thank you for having me, DJJ. Absolutely.